Hello everyone, Pastor Joe here, Holy Spirit Ranch Ministries for our Sunday message. Let me just clip my phone in here, give me a second, and we're good to go. Thank you all for being here. Okay, there we are. Hello everyone, uh, welcome. If you haven't tuned into these messages that we've been giving for a while, over a year, I guess, every Sunday and Wednesday at 1 p.m. Uh, U.S. time, uh, coming from Georgia, uh, Jasper, Georgia, uh, Philippines, it's 1 a.m., uh, Kenya, I think it's about an eight-hour difference. Thank you all for being here. Um, a shout-out to our family members and our brothers and sisters in Christ and the Holy Spirit Ranch team um, in America and the Philippines and Kenya. Thank you all for being here. And, um, and new, new people, that people that have never tuned into these messages, thank you for being here. Um, Holy Spirit Ranch Ministries, speak Jesus, love people, and never give up. And the purpose of these messages is to speak the truth of Jesus Christ in a hurting world. It's to encourage us believers to be courageous and strong in this crazy world and to be a light in a dark world. People need us. They need the truth of Jesus Christ. They need it. And we're here. God has given us the honor and the privilege to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. And if you're not a believer, thank you for being here. That's the main reason we're here, is for you to hear the truth and is to encourage the body of Christ, us, to speak the truth of Jesus, the love, the joy, the power of Jesus Christ, of God our Father. Today's message, and let me pray first. Father God, help me, Holy Spirit, speak through me. Help me, Holy Spirit, to not be in the way Help me, Holy Spirit, to be a humble, open vessel for your truth to speak through, to touch lives, to change lives. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Priscilla, thank you for being here. Um, oh, give me a second, y'all. A few technical difficulties, but we're going to get it right. Uh... Today's message, sowing seed. And we're going to read um, from Matthew chapter 13. Now, this parable that Jesus Christ himself spoke was in Matthew, and Mark, and Luke. And all, the, um, all of them are very similar, especially Matthew and Mark, I believe. But we're going to read from, from Matthew. And we're going to go to chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. And I'm going to read pieces of it. And I'm going to read right now from the Bible. A large, crew, a large crowd soon gathered around him. That's Jesus. So he got into a boat. Then he sat there and he taught as the people stood on the shore. He told many stories in the form of parables, such as this one. And a parable, if, you're not, if, you, if you don't know what a parable is, you know, why does speak, Jesus speak in parables? He used he, stories. He made up stories of everyday objects and relationships to reveal spiritual truths. So he spoke in terms, everyday, everyday stuff, to explain the spiritual truths. Listen, I'm going to read right from the Bible. Listen, a farmer went out to plant some seeds as he scattered them across his field. And when you're sowing seeds, if you don't plant gardens and don't farm and know nothing about farming, sowing seeds, they go like this. They don't just put one at a time very carefully, bop, 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 bop. They sow them. And when you're planting a vegetable garden, for instance, when you sow the seeds, you just kind of go like this. Okay. Some seeds fell on a footpath and the birds came and ate them. A footpath then and even now is dirt that's been packed down from, from walking on it. So it's hard. And when you, when you till for a garden, you loosen it all up so the seeds will take. 
and the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The seeds sprouted quickly, but because the soil was shallow, they soon wilted away under the hot sun, and they didn't have deep roots. And they died. Other seeds fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. You know, I planted a vegetable garden this year, and some of it did okay, but I got real busy repairing house, fixing rotted wood, painting, all kinds of stuff, and uh, didn't pay attention to the vegetable garden. And I had planted seeds, and they started coming up, and these were for like... Uh, green beans grown out of vine, cucumbers, which I've normally done well with, but I didn't pay attention, and the weeds completely choked it out, and killed it. Still, other seeds fell on fertile soil. And they produced a crop that was 60, 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as been planted. So anyone who hears to hear should listen and understand. His disciples came and they asked, why do you use parables when you talk to the people? And Jesus replied, you, listen to everyone, you are permitted, permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. That really hit me. How many times I read the scripture? Never really saw that. I never really got it. Jesus is speaking saying, you, are permitted, you're pr allowed to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given, and they will have an abundance of knowledge. But for those who are not listening, even what little understanding they have will be taken away from them. This is why I use these parables, for they look but they don't really see, they hear, but they don't really understand. This fulfills the prophecy of Isaiah that says, when you hear what I say, you will not understand. When you see what I do, you will not comprehend. For the hearts of these people are hardened. And their ears cannot hear. And they have closed their eyes. So they cannot see. And their ears cannot hear. And their hearts cannot understand. And they cannot turn to me and let me heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. I tell you the truth. Many prophets and righteous people longed to see what you see. But they didn't see it. They longed to hear what you hear, but they didn't hear it. Now listen, this is Jesus still speaking. Now listen to the explanation of the parable by the farmer planting seeds. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message about the kingdom. And the seed, of course, is God's word. That's the seed. Hear about the kingdom and don't understand, then the evil one comes and snatches away the seed that was planted in their hearts. The seed in the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. And that's so, so, so common in the body of Christ, in the church. So many people go to an event, they get excited, but they're not deep-rooted. And it passes quickly. And they've done studies on evangelistic missions and trips. And very often, there'll be, a, let's say, a mission trip somewhere and they do an event and maybe a thousand people raise their hands and say they give their lives to Christ. 
and you go back there a year later, and I don't, I'm not gonna, there's lots of different studies on this, I'm not gonna get into it, but you go back a year later and those thousand people, wow, a thousand people got saved at that event Saturday, wow. And you go back a year later and they found out that maybe, you know, maybe 15% attend church, you know, maybe less than 10, maybe five or six percent are actively having a relationship with God and with Jesus. They got excited, but, but the soil wasn't good and the roots didn't go deep. <clears throat> but since they don't have deep roots, <clears throat> excuse me, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. The seed that fell among the thorns represents those who hear God's word. Hi, Doug. But all too quickly, the message is crowded out by the worries of this life and the lure of wealth, so no fruit is produced. It sure is easy to really have the living word of God in us and to get so busy, not just chasing wealth, just living, just surviving. We get so busy in our lives a lot of times, the stupid stuff we get busy with, too, it's not just survival. It's our culture. It's bye-bye, half-half, me, me. And we get so busy in our lives. What happens to that word, that seed, the word of God that's been planted us? How productive has it become? It gets choked out by those thorns. Jesus knows, evidently, Jesus knows what he's talking about. The seed that fell on good soil represents those who truly hear and understand God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, or even 100 times as much as been planted. The people that, so Jesus said, the people that truly hear and understand God's word. And he's not saying you have to go to school of theology and know exactly everything in this book. He's not saying that. He's just saying you need to know, you need to hear God's word, understand it. Okay. <clears throat> right now, the, way, the reason God gave me this message, of course, all these messages are for me as much as for you. I sometimes wonder if they're more for me than for who I'm speaking to here. What condition is your soil? Bottom line is what condition is your soil in now? You know, when this scripture, I had at one time kind of thought it was, a, you know, Jesus is saying, so the, the, you know, God sowing the seed, which is the word. What kind of soil does it fall on? You know, are you a hardened path? Is your, is it, are you shallow? Is, is your soil shallow? Um, do you have too much stuff in your life? The phone's choking choking out God's word in you. But it's not a one-time event. Our soil, our condition, the condition of our soil, let's say, changes. Even as Christians, it's not just a one-time event. So our soil could be good and fruitful, and then it becomes a hardened path. Our hearts get hard. Or our soil could have been good soil where it was being we were producing in our lives fruit for the Lord, maybe for many years, and then the thorns, the busy life starts choking, choking us, and our soil. It's not the same soil that it was. It's just not. Even though the Holy Spirit still lives in us. So that's today's message is starting with Jesus speaking about the farmer sowing the seed, the word in our lives, God sowing the word in our life. Right now, look at where Where's our soil? And you know, most of us probably know. It's gotten hardened or it's fertile. Some people right now listening to this message of praise God and they, they have that fertile soil. You've got fertile soil where the weeds aren't choking you out. The business of your life is not, is not choking you out. 
and the devil's not robbing the truth of the word from you because you're walking actively and because you've got fertile soil. Thank God for you. Thank the Lord you're, you're in that spiritual condition that your soil is good. But many of us right now, the soil is not what it should be. It's not fertile soil. Our, our soil is hardened. It's a hardened path that the seed has trouble growing in and the devil just robs it from you. Some of us are just too busy, not spending enough time with God, not nurturing those seeds enough to be fruitful. So what condition is your soil in? And the answer, well, I'm gonna go to soil condition. Soil conditioner, okay, you know, everyone, if you've probably heard of that if you have gardens or plant seeds, or if you don't, you might never heard of it, but. It's called soil conditioner, and there's lots of forms of it. Spray, chemicals, natural, bags of stuff. <clears throat> and soil conditioner for your garden or for your vegetables is to improve the soil structure by increasing aeration, water holding capacity, and nutrients. They loosen up compacted hard pan and clay soils and release locked up nutrients. I saw that for the heck of it, you know. They loosen up compacted hard soil and release locked up nutrients. And to me, to me, when we got hard packed, like the hard path that Jesus is speaking about, as believers, and many people listening to this message are believers of Jesus, born-again believers. As a believer of Christ, you've already got the Holy Spirit in you. And I talk about this a lot. But if, you, if, you're, if your soil's not good right now and it's hard-packed, the Holy Spirit is not the power of the Holy Spirit, the guidance of God's Holy Spirit, the truth of God's Holy Spirit. not being allowed to manifest in that soil. He didn't go anywhere. He's there, but he's kind of locked up, compacted. So soil conditioner, what releases locked up nutrients. So I say, God, God is our soil conditioner. And this sound, might sound weird to you, but it hit me pretty good. And if we need some conditioning of our soil, whether we need our roots to go deeper or whether we're I got hardened hearts or we'll get crowded out by the business of life or the worries and cares of the world, whatever the condition of your soil is, just go to God. Just go to God. Seek God and trust God. Seek and trust God. And he will renew your spirit. He will recondition your soil to be able to receive God's word, the seed, and grow. And grow strong and healthy. God will recondition your soil. He will recondition your spiritual condition. Sounds simple, right? That's the only answer. I'm going to read a few scriptures here, okay? We're going to go to Matthew chapter 6, 33. I'm going to read it right from the Bible. Verse 31. This is Jesus speaking. We're, we're going to read Jesus, and we're also going to read King David, a few words that he has, and also the Apostle Paul. So don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat, what will we drink, what will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your Heavenly Father already knows all of your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above, above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble 
is enough for today. We're going to go right to Psalm 631, written by King David. I'm sorry, Psalm 63, verse 1. And this is King David when he was in the wilderness of Judah. O oh God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land where there's no water. I've seen you in your sanctuary and gazed upon your power and your glory. Your unfailing love is better than life itself. How I praise you. I will praise you as long as I live, lifting up my hands to you in prayer. You satisfy me more than the richest feast. I will praise you with songs of joy. And he goes on. He's in a rough place, King David, at this time. And he's praising God. And he's seeking God. Um, Psalms 51. Verse 10, King David. Create, he's speaking to God, he's praying to God. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence. and Don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. This is the great King David. And of course, to something we have, the Holy Spirit has been given to all believers now at Pentecost and all believers have the Holy Spirit will never leave us. We have that. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Only way to recondition our soil is to have our spirits renewed. And the only way to do that is to seek God and to trust God. And the Holy Spirit will help us to do that. Um, Romans chapter 15. I know I got a lot of stuff I'm reading here. Romans chapter, scripture. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Apostle Paul speaking to the church, speaking to us. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. So, he's saying don't copy. I mean, he's talking about worshiping God and a lot of other things, but don't seek the world to guide you, to fix your problems. Don't seek, don't seek the world's reconditioning, soil conditioner, to fix your soil. Seek and trust God. And he will renew your spirit. Um, I have so much here. Romans chapter 15, verse 13. Apostle Paul still speaking to the church of Rome. I pray, he says, that the source of hope will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. John chapter 16, verse 13. This is Jesus speaking. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He's speaking to the body of Christ before he goes, ascends to heaven, before he's killed and tortured and sacrificed for us. 
and then resurrected from the dead three days later. And he's speaking and explaining to his disciples, his followers, that they will be given the Holy Spirit, which we have been given. And he's saying, when the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said the Spirit would tell you whatever he receives from me. We have so much, and we let the devil take our seed. We let the devil get us too busy. We let the enemy rob our joy. We let the enemy confuse us. We let the enemy, the spirits of doubt, enter where we start doubting some of God's word. We stop trusting God, trusting people in the world and everything but God in solving our problems in pursuing our future. And Jesus is saying, don't worry. You're going to be given the Holy Spirit that'll speak for me, that'll speak for my Father, that will guide you. He will never leave you. He will reveal the future to you. He will operate in power in you. He will manifest in you to other people. He will show God's love. He'll guide you. He'll give you remembrance of the things that Jesus I've said. And that spirit of God that lives in all believers is stronger than the spirits in this world. So when your spirit, your soil needs to be reconditioned, seek God, trust God. Charlotte, thank you for being here. Um, you know, and where I'm reading right now, <clears throat> excuse me. not speak on his own the spirit so when God's Holy Spirit that lives in you is speaking to you <clears throat> he's speaking for Jesus he's speaking for God and when you need your soil to be reconditioned and you seek God you seek Jesus you seek his spirit to help you God's Holy Spirit will reveal the truth of God to you he will we're gonna go to um Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Like this message is what, how, to, how to get your soil reconditioned, how to get your spirit, how to get your, your, your soil fertile for hearing God's word, for living the life that he has planned for you and not to be distracted by everything else by the cares of life. Verse 31, Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, speaking what God has told him. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. When we need our spirits lifted, when our soil is not receiving the seed, God's word, and that seed's not growing, his word is not growing in our life, his power is not operating in our life, or it seems that way. We need soil reconditioning. 
We need to seek and to do that. God is the great conditioner. We need our spirits renewed. We need our soil reconditioned. It's gotten hard packed. Or, we, or it's gotten the cares of this world have just robbed us of, of truly hearing this. We see pieces of it, but it's not growing in us because of the busyness of our lives or the worries of our lives or the challenges, which is just what the enemy wants. And Jesus was very concerned about this. And that's why he gave us the parable of the farmer, God sowing the seed, which is the word. And today's message is, to some people, like I say, some people here, their soil's really good. Praise God for that. Probably most of us, our soil, re our soil, our spirit, needs some reconditioning. And if we seek God, we seek him. Seek. It's something we have to do. And we trust him. Not the world, not the lies, not the enemy. But if we trust God and seek him, trust his word, the seed, God will renew our spirits. And his Holy Spirit will have fertile soil to manifest in. God's spirit lives in us, but he doesn't force himself on us. And if you're not a believer of Jesus, give your life to Christ. I'm not saying whether you're Methodist, Baptist, Catholic, whatever denomination. I sometimes ask people, are you born again believing? They give me this look like, what is that? All those crazy people? Jesus says you must be born again to enter the kingdom. If born again believer is not anything weird. It's just Jesus, born again. It's a follower of Christ. Um, in, the, in the church, many years before they were called Christians, they were just called believers in a way. And people would meet people in the street. Are you a believer? Are you a believer in the way? Because Jesus says, I'm the way the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And that's John 14, 6 in the Bible. If you haven't given your life to Christ, and there's lots of people that go to church every Sunday, but they never said, Jesus, please be my Lord. I realized you died on a cross for my sins, for me. All you have to do is believe a little bit. Usually that's how it comes in. It's not a big bam, you know. So, Everyone who's listening who has not given their life to Christ, just realize that he died on the cross for your sins. Because we all have sin, we all have junk. And he died for you. And it was terrible what he did for him. He had no sin and he bared all of our sins. And then he was tortured. And he's God in the flesh. The Son of God is God in the flesh, Emmanuel, God with us. And the great thing is three days later, the Holy Spirit rose him from the dead. And for 40 days, he hung out on this earth. Over 500 people saw him, I believe, before he ascended to heaven. And he gave great messages before and after his resurrection. And he also let us know that when he guarantees us eternal life through him, he showed us that the Holy Spirit rose him from the dead. He defeated Death, not just sin, but he defeated death when he rose from the dead and he went to heaven. Just give your life to Christ if you haven't given your life to Christ. He gives you eternal life. He, when you ask for forgiveness of your sins through Jesus and repent, and repentance is a beautiful word. It's a powerful word. It's, it's a powerful act. It's not like, repent, you're going to go to hell. Repent is, is turning from your junk and turning to God for the answer and saying, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm sorry. Holy Spirit, give me the power. Because the Spirit of the Holy Spirit is stronger than this, that lives in you, stronger than the spirits of this world. So you ask the Holy Spirit, help me. Change the way I think about this stuff. Change who I am. And that's how you defeat sin. That's how he defeats sin. But you're turning to him. Just ask Jesus to to come in and be your Lord and your Savior. And you become not just a creation of God, but at that moment you become God's child and you can call God your, your daddy. You can call God your father, not just God. You're creative, but you're your papa. You can start your day in the morning and say, good morning, papa. I'm your son. I'm your daughter. 
I know I got you and you got my back. And when you enter this crazy world, you've got your father watching out for you. And you've got his spirit living you. And the word says that his spirit reveals the secrets of his, his spirit that lives in you, joins your spirit. And his spirit that lives in you reveals the secrets of his spirit. Wow. That's what we've got. And that's what Jesus gives you when you give your life to Christ. And if you're in this message, whether it's live now on Facebook or you see it later, you just gave your life to Christ. You are now my brother and sister, and you joined a huge family of people, brothers and sisters in Christ. And the Holy Spirit moves into all believers instantly when you give life to Christ. God's Spirit moves into you. And even now, after being saved for many years, I got saved in 1997, if even now, it's hard for me to even fathom that God's Spirit lives in someone like me. But when I see him operate, I see miracles happen. It's like really cool. <laughs> I'm going to stop now. Father God, um, I thank you for giving me this word. Please, Holy Spirit, use this message to encourage people that they know they can just come to you and you will recondition their soil. You will help them to have fertile soil so your word will grow in them. I pray, Father God, that this word will touch people, has touched people that have not given their lives to Christ, that now have, that are now brothers and sisters in the kingdom, part of the royal priesthood, citizens of the kingdom of heaven. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you all for being here. Um, by the way, uh, the wedding in South Carolina and Hilton Head was awesome. We officiated a wedding. It was um, on the beach. It was absolutely beautiful. Um, the enemy doesn't want marriage anymore. God wants marriage. He wants a man and a woman to marry each other, produce children, and teach them his ways. It was awesome. It was on the beach. And they wanted to get rebaptized. And 1130 night in the ocean, it was dark, a dark out night. Um, they were baptized. We baptize them. It's just awesome. God bless you all. Check us out on www.holyspiritranchministries.org. Uh, YouTube, hit subscribe. There's a lot we have on our website. There's a lot going on. And uh, Facebook, God bless you all. Thank you for being here. I love you. Thank you.